studying Sunnah, Abu Ishaq al-Shatibi's concept of bid'ah in al-Ihtisam, McGill University, 1999, A.S. Jahar. Chapter 1. B. Sufis and Jurists in Andalusia. The great traveller, Ibn Battuta, who died in 779, which is commensurate with 1377, reports that Andalusia, and especially Granada, was famous for the number of jurists and Sufis. Among them, the most famous were Muhammad ibn Ibrahim al-Bayani, Abu Sa'id ibn Lub, who, who became Shatavi's teacher, and Abu Qasim al-Sabti. According to him, the people of Granada were not only engaged in constant juristic debate, but were given much to practicing mystical orders. It was the Zawiyas which served as the centers of tasawwuf activities. The famous Sufi and Zawi leader, Zawiya leader was Abu Abdullah ibn Mahruq. His Zawiya was well known as Zawiya Baraka, located on the mountain Uqab. Moreover, Ibn Battuta notes that Granada attracted groups of Fakir Sufis, originally from Samarkand. Among them were the likes of Abu Abdullah Samarkandi from Khurasan um, and from Khurasan al Haj Hussein Khurasani. Historically, it is difficult for us to delineate exactly the position of the Sufi orders in Andalusia. For, as we shall see in the particular case of Islamic Spain, Sufis were often targeted by jurists. This was probably due to their different approaches to manifesting the ordinances of God and the Son of the Prophet. Both camps, however, claim to be servants of God and to be complying with the principles of Sharia. Our discussion will therefore deal specifically with those Sufis judged as being extreme on the one hand and those jurists who were reproached by Shatabi for being lax on the other. Before describing the attitudes Sufis and jurists, the attitudes of Sufis and jurists in Andalusia, it would be useful to look at the issues they raised in the broader context of Islamic thought. The case of the great reformer of Sufism and juristic thought, Sayyid Ahmed Sirhindi, who died in 1034 commensurate with 1624, is instructed is instructing given that he reconciled these two ways of implementing the rules of God. In his mind, the Sawwuf and Fiqh were inseparable, for knowledge of God could only be attained through the Tariqah and the Hakika. Tariqah is the path, Hakika is the reality. Both concepts were for him subservient to the Shari'iyah, or its derivative concepts of Ikhlas, Iman and Amal, sincerity, belief and action. He furthermore contended that the rapture and ecstasy which Sufis experienced were not ultimately the goal of Sufism. For him, they were the myths and fancies with which the novices of Sufism are fed. Ikhlas, the essence of Sharia, could only be attained by following the path of the Sufi. From Sir Hindi's point of view, the intention to obey God is the ultimate and superior goal, not the experience of rapture in themselves. Some Sufis engaged in even more indulgent practices, which led to the corruption of doctrine and earned the antagonism of jurists who declared such practices to be strange strange innovations without basis in the son of the prophet or the companions. To the jurists, therefore, any form of worship, ibadah, without clear basis in the Qur'an or the sunnah was bid'ah. Jurists were also anxious about the excessive differences between the tariqahs in performing dhikr, dhikr is invocation of God, and meditation which would serve as an indictment of the authenticity of the Shari way. As such, they often question and even condemn the Sufis themselves as heretical bid'ah. As esoteric devotees, the Sufis espoused a metaphysical approach to the Qur'an and the Sunnah, which gave them the widest possible latitude in its interpretation. Sufis often went further. Espousing a unitive metaphysic could be regarded as primary, significant for itself and dispensed with from any way of life. Its full appreciation could be seen as the very goal of the mystical discipline. Jurists, fuqaha, according to Bernard Weiss, tended to be more concerned with the zahir al lafs the exoteric meaning. Such a meaning can be discovered with the aid of lexicography, grammar, and other sciences concerned with the exploration of the inner workings of the laf. Laf is the statement, the phrase. By contrast, the esoteric meaning subscribed to by Sufis cannot be accessed through philological investigation, but must be sought from wholly private sources or through consultation with individuals privileged enough to possess it. Sufism is an ideology based upon mystical experience and cannot therefore rely solely on the dahir meaning of the lafs, the law written in the Qur'an and the Hadith. 
Ibn Arabi, the great Andalusian Sufi, criticized jurists for what he saw as their dependence on qiyas and their rigidity in interpreting the letter of the law with ra without regard for its inner meaning. Moreover, he felt that jurists were hypocrites who fabricated fatwas in the interests of power and wealth. Unsurprisingly, the relationship between the two factions was not always harmonious. Jurists condemn Sufis for these transgressions in ritual practice and their innovations, bid'ah, while the latter claim that jurists were too rationalistic, ignoring the crux of ibadah. The evidence shows that Sufis and jurists were to some extent upholding the rulings enshrined in the Qur'an and the Sunnah, while also deviating from the path laid by the predecessors. Stay tuned for many more parts.